Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module we're going to talk all about the power inside of your computer. And the CompTIA a certification training course 220-601, that exam in section 1-1, requires that you know how to identify the names, purposes, and characteristics of power supplies. So we have some listed here about ATX power supplies. There are proprietary power supplies. There's different voltages. So in this module, we're going to also learn about 220-602 in that exam. Not only do you need to know about power supplies, but you need to know how to add, remove, and configure the power supplies inside of these systems. We're going to go through all of that in this module today. We're going to learn about electricity, the basics of electricity, uh, amp, volt, watt, what those words actually mean. We'll talk about what the supply connectors are on your power supply. And we'll also talk about some power supply standards that are out there. One note of caution, we're dealing with electricity here. We want to be sure when we're working around something like electricity that we're very careful and, and have the right precautions in place. We don't want anybody who's using this course or anything that they're doing in their normal daily life to ever be electrocuted because of something you're doing inside of a computer. So you need to have a nice, healthy respect for power and make sure as you go through here that you're following all of the safety tips that we give you. Let's start with understanding what an amp is and what a volt is. An amp, or an ampere, is the rate of electron flow through a, a particular point in one second. In fact, if you actually measured it, one amp is 6.242 times 10 to the 18th electrons per second. That's a lot of electrons flowing through. You can see why we use the short term of an amp to describe a certain rate of usage of power across a certain point. You'll also hear about the term volt or voltage. Voltages are really talks about pressure. And when we talk about electricity, you'll see very often that it's described as water. Since, since electricity is something that's difficult to see, water is a good thing to compare it against. And voltage talks about the amount of pressure in that electrical line. Voltage is usually something that's very standardized in different places. So in the United States, the voltages are generally generally all the same when you plug into a wall outlet. Uh, when you go to different countries, the voltages may change. So you'll notice on the back of power supplies that there are different connections that you can plug in, uh, different settings that you can make for that power supply, depending on the voltage you happen to be using in your particular country. So when we're talking about amp, we know that that's how much how much of that electron, how much of the electricity is flowing across a point. And the voltage is talking about the pressure. And it's maybe the pressure in your country, you aren't putting out a lot of voltage. Maybe it's like a lot of voltage on the link. So I put these pictures here to get an understanding of what we're thinking about when we talk about voltage. There are also is a couple of terms you're going to hear about. One is the watt. And when we talk about wattage, we're talking about how much power we're actually using. This is a combination, really multiplying together. The voltage and the number of amps in use gives you the total number of wattage that's used. So you can think about your standard light bulbs. We talk about a 60 watt light bulb. And that's what that's referring to on our 120 volt system here in the United States. If we're using 0.5 amps, that is what 60 watts amounts to. And so when we're looking at the wattage of particular components within a computer, this is what we're talking about is how much current are we actually using. Sometimes you'll see the term volt amperes, VA, or volt amps. And this is really talking about apparent power. This is when we start sizing up UPS systems, when we're talking about trying to figure out how much battery is really stored up in there. How much can I expect to see once I start using that UPS? And it's a good number to start using when you're sizing things up. We'll talk more about UPS systems in just a moment. Let's talk a little bit about current. In the United States, when you plug into a wall outlet, you're plugging this into something called alternating current, or AC. This is the direction of this current is constantly reversing, which is why we call it alternating current. This is a very efficient way to distribute electricity. We're going to talk in a moment about direct current and how computers use DC to operate. And you may wonder, why aren't we just coming right out of the wall with the DC? Why do we have to have these power supplies that convert from AC to DC? And that's because AC is very, very easy to distribute over large distances, especially places like the United States. If we want to get power to everybody, AC is a very efficient way to do it. Now, the frequency of this AC cycle, this 
this constantly reversing cycle is very important. And as you can see, in the United States and Canada, we use 110 to 120 volts of AC at 60 hertz, or 60 cycles per second. If you go to Europe, for instance, completely different voltage, completely different amount of pressure, if you want to think of it that way, coming out of your wall outlet. And notice they also have a very different cycle, 50 cycles per second. So when you're moving from the United States to Europe, you'll notice that your power supplies have to be able to be compatible with both types, or you have to get some type of converter so that you can use the electrical units, electrical pieces that you use in the United States when you take them to Europe and vice versa. Now, you'll also see AC. Whenever you see it, there's a symbol for AC that looks like this wave. And that describes, really, that alternating current, that flow, that sine wave of current that's going back and forth. As I mentioned, our personal computer systems and many other electronics use DC, or direct current, to operate. This is the symbol for DC that you'll, use, you'll see very often. DC is always moving in one direction. It's a constant voltage moving in one direction. And so that's why it's very nice to have the DC inside of our computer. It makes it very easy for devices to operate with DC. But we have to have a way to convert from AC to DC. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's look at a power supply, and let's see what it shows on the power supply. This is a power supply I had in my office from an old motherboard system that I had set up. You can see this is the power supply itself. There's a place to plug in the line from the outlet. There's the AC. And on the other side, all of these wires coming out the back side are DC connections. These are DC voltages coming out. Some of them have different connectors, too. We'll talk about what those connectors are in just a moment. But I'm really interested in knowing what this all says here on the front. So let's look more at the specifications. This is a power supply from a company called Delta Electronics. Here's the model number there. The input, or what you're bringing in from your outlet that's in the wall, is anywhere from 100 to 120 volts of AC. There's our little AC symbol right there. And it's using four amps coming in from the wall. If you are in Europe, this particular power supply also works with the 200 to 240 volts of AC running at 2 amps. So this is a switching power supply that can use either type of connection. So I can use it anywhere that I have those input voltages, anywhere from 100 to 120, like in the United States, or 200 to 240, like they have in Europe. Now, out, coming out the other side of this, the DC voltages, notice our DC symbols are also here. There's a lot of different what we call rails of voltage. Some voltage are plus 5, plus 12, plus 3.3, minus 12, minus 5. And these are the polarities of voltage that we have going back and forth over these links. You can think of the pluses and minuses a lot like when you're measuring the power inside of a battery. If you're looking at it with a, a multimeter and you simply reverse your leads, you'll notice that the number goes from positive to negative. That's what really what this is referring to. It's a point of reference if you want to look at it that way. So there's a lot of different rails here, some that have provide 5 volts of DC power at 16 amps, some that provide 3.3 .3 volts positive DC power at 9.2 amps. So you can start to see how each one of these different cables and connections coming out of our power supply have different types of voltages on them. Here's an interesting one, plus 5 VSB. That's for a standby. That means that there's always voltage going to the motherboard from this power supply. This is a very much a standard on the ATX motherboards so that it's constantly waiting for you to hit that button on the front. So it can sit in a standby mode. And when you hit the button, it, it refreshes. It wakes up so that it can start up from where it left off before. It never really actually turns off. And this is really important. There is always power going to the motherboard. I talked about having a healthy respect for power when you're working inside of a computer system. And you hear people always say, make sure you unplug from the power. This is why, because there's always going to be power going onto these motherboard systems. Notice that it says their total output is not to exceed 110 watts of power. And that's referring to all of the different components that we connect to this power supply. Hard drives, fans, the motherboard itself, video cards. Everything uses a wattage of power. And this is saying, make sure we don't exceed 110 watts. Let's talk about the connectors that we have coming out of that power supply. If you look at the end of all of those crazy cables coming out the end of that, you'll have one that's very common. This is one that's been around for a long time. And we call it this four-pin peripheral power connector. You'll often hear it referred to as a Molex connector. Molex is the name of the company that created this type of connector. And Molex makes a lot of different kinds of connectors. We just happen to use this company's name to identify that four pin. So if somebody says, I need a Molex connector to plug in into my hard drive, that's the type of connector they're referring to. 
There is somewhat of a non-standard, but it's, it's one of these that's all in every power supply because you often need it for, for floppy drives. Floppy drives, especially the three and a half inch drives, became a lot smaller over the years. And so we created a specialized type of power connection just for those floppy drives. Sometimes there'll be an adapter that adapts this four pin Molex connector into the smaller connection. So you can have a very standard set of Molex connectors coming out of the power supply. So if you see that mini connector and you don't have a floppy drive inside your systems, many of the new systems don't, you'll know that that's why that's sitting there. In case you ever wanted to add a floppy drive into your system, that's where why you'd have that in that place. And today, the latest power supplies have coming off the back of them a uh, power that's specifically designed for a SATA drive. These look a little bit different. They're a little flatter. And you can see there's a lot more pins inside of it. And this is for those specialized SATA power drives. And if you go back to our module on SATA drives, you'll get more details about what that power connector actually looks like. And there's a picture of one here, so you can reference that view. There are a set of standards that we have in place for power supplies. And this was pretty important because as the systems and motherboards have progressed through the years, our power supplies have also needed to progress along with them. As we've added more hard drives and more video cards and more powerful systems, we've also needed more power to be able to support those. One of the very early standards on the ATX motherboard is something called an ATX 12V, ATX 12 volt power supply. It was the original ATX power standard. This is the one that's on my motherboard. It's 20 pins. And as I showed you before, it also includes that extra pin of standby power. That was something new on the ATX motherboards. And so this is a very common connector. You'll see it on a lot of the motherboards. In fact, it's very standardized. And you'll see as we go through these standards, it's one that we've just kept all the way through these years. We also have another standard called the ATX 12 volt 1.3. And what this did was not only have that same 20 pin power supply, but there was another four pin connector there, an extra 12 volt connector that came off to the side because these systems needed more power. These video cards got a lot more powerful. We added more hard drives into our systems. There was also another type of connector that was created with a standard called an auxiliary connector. It was this odd looking flat six pin connection. So you'll see that. But part of the problem was that the power supply manufacturers might create this extra four pin connector or they might have a power supply with a six pin auxiliary connector. But occasionally they wouldn't include both of those. So if you have a motherboard that needs one of these types, you had to make sure you bought a power supply that was able to support that. That became a bit of a problem. And we really need to standardize things a lot better. And that's why the ATX 12V 2.0 specification was created. This not only said we're going to have a 20 pin connector, but also included as part of the standard these extra four pins. And you can see they're very modular, in some cases even clip onto the side to create this 24 pin connector. But your motherboard might use 20 or it might use 24 with this particular specification. And it was backwards compatible. This standard also required that the motherboard or the power supply also provide SATA connections for the drives that were on that system. So these extra SATA connections were standardized with this power uh, specification 2.0 as well. The One of the latest power supply specifications that's out there is the 2.2 standard. It's a standardized now 24 pin main connector. There's no question that you're going to use 24 pins when you plug into a motherboard. And that was really driven by all of these PCI Express connections that we have on our motherboard. We have a set on bus connections in an earlier module that talked all about PCI Express and how everything seems to be moving to that standard. And to support that, the power supplies are now created so that they have enough power to provide power to those PCI Express settings. We also had increased 12 volt output. Again, more power for that motherboard. And that odd little flat auxiliary connector completely disappeared in this connection. Now you're not going to have a problem when you buy a power supply that you don't have the connection you need for your motherboard. Here's what one of these power supplies looks like. You can see that it's got this power connection coming in from the wall. There's a switch on the side. In fact, this red switch allows you to switch between 115 volt and the 220 volt that you need over in Europe. And then you've got all these connectors on the back side of this. And you can see a lot of the different connections we have. Let's zoom up on that and have a look at them. We have this 24 pin motherboard connection that we see here. Here's a PCI Express. It is this six pin PCI Express connection. And the power supplies might have have one or two or even three different PCI Express power connections just to support the high power coming out of those PCI Express cards. There's also some extra 4-pin 12-volt connections. Here's a couple of them right here. Some motherboards will have separate inputs that you can pro provide additional 12 volt input onto the motherboard. And so this power supply gives us a couple of options in case we need to plug into motherboards that will support that. 
And here again is some of the standard Molex and floppy drive and SATA connections that you've seen also through the years. This isn't on the a certification exam, but it does show some of the latest configurations of power supplies. This is very modular. You've got all these crazy connections. Sometimes you need the 4-pin 12 volts. Sometimes you need PCI Express. Sometimes you need a Molex connector. What if you get a power supply and it doesn't have the connectors you need? Well, these days the power supplies are becoming more modular. And you can see with this one, you get to choose what type of connections you need and you just plug into the rails that you want coming out of that power supply. Now, a word of warning, you want to be very careful about this. Unfortunately, power supply manufacturers have used same type of connections coming out of here. But different manufacturers don't always wire them the same way. You don't want to plug into a power supply and then have your hard drive blow up because you plugged it in with the wrong type of voltage. So be very careful about what you're buying and how you're plugging it in. Look at the documentation and make sure when you start to install it that it's working the way you would expect. If you've ever put together a system and it's had a small motherboard or it's in a small form factor, you may have seen power supplies like this that have a low profile form factor or a small form factor. So I put a couple of pictures of those up so you could start to see there's different flavors and different models. This is why it's so important to check the documentation when you start to swap out a power supply that it not only supports the motherboard you're plugging into, but that it's going to fit into the chassis that you're using that everything else is going into. In review, we've looked at the basics of electricity and what a, an amp is and what a watt is and how we can start looking at how voltages affect what we're plugging into in our personal computer. We've looked at our power supply connectors and we've gone through a few standards and how power supplies have changed through the years. If you'd like to comment on this video, you'd like to see other videos that we have for free on our website or participate in our forums, you can go to freeaplus.com. See you there.